This is the best time to come here before opening hours to hear all this silence. You can feel that the halls and everything in them are waiting for this day. I was about three years old, or maybe less, when I first came to the Hermitage. I remember the impression that everything here is alive, that I'm in a sort of fairy tale, and when I touched the feet of the Atlantes, I felt that they were alive. And all these statues of ancient gods, they seemed alive to me too. Maybe they were just frozen in the moment, but they were still living and probably still working some of their miracles. The Hermitage is um, an international um, music, uh, um, institution and it's famous worldwide. People are yes, very uh, jealous that I get to have this opportunity to see what the, most of the public wouldn't be able to see. I don't think too many people have ever seen me or even heard of me. But I'm one of the oldest guardians of the Hermitage. Who knows what could have become of the exhibits, if not for me and my friends. Meow. Iona Ballantyne is never late for work. But she isn't an employee here at the Hermitage or a guide. Iona is a volunteer from England. When we stand in the entrance, we have to tell people when they're passing through to the um, turnstiles, we have to tell them to take off their outdoor clothing, like their coats and jackets, and put them in the cloakroom, and um, just answer any general questions that they may have about um, the museum, about where to find maps or guides um, or um, excursions. In London, Iona studies Russian culture. A friend from Russia recommended that she work at the Hermitage in St. Petersburg as an intern. Iona works here for free. She's one of 150 volunteers. They usher in the visitors, carry boxes, arrange chairs where they're needed to be. Whatever it takes to earn that prestigious title, Hermitage volunteer. Not everyone is worthy of the honor. About five hours is what we expect from people if they really want to become fully fledged volunteers. Then we'll have a museum pass made for them. Five hours a week is the minimum that's required. If newcomer Oksana can find enough free time and she passes her probation period, she will also become a volunteer at Russia's Grand Museum. You will be taking part in one of our grand events, the Hermitage Cat Day. Instead of an interview, I was taken by the hand and led to the basement where we're hanging pictures. I have absolutely no idea what we're doing or what it is for, but I see that's all about the cats. Day of Cats in the Hermitage, which is, um, happens every year. It's for the cats. But there's lots of cats which lots of people don't realize live actually underneath the Hermitage in order to catch mice primarily so that they don't, um, you know, um, get in the way or damage any of the precious works that they have. She's right. No enemies down here. I've been in the museum basement with my friends for years. Rodents dare not set foot in this place. They can sense danger from afar. Volunteers? 
Could you help? Felicitas. Felicitas, I think yes. we need to fix this here. You don't need scissors. I'll show you. Okay? So, Oksana, this is how we put our volunteers to work. Whether or not Oksana becomes a volunteer will be Mikhail's decision. He too came to the Hermitage one day to offer his own help. St. Petersburg's 300th anniversary was approaching and I didn't want to be just an onlooker. In 2002, I came to the Hermitage and offered to organize a group of state Hermitage volunteers. Our task was to find 150 people and select the most active ones who would be able to act in any unexpected situation. You have to remember that on the night of May 27th, when the Hermitage was open all night, it had the highest number of visitors. There were many, many pregnant ladies, because a lot of them hoped to have their child on this very day, because there were special prizes offered, like apartments for babies who were born on St. Petersburg's anniversary. Indeed, a few women did deliver their babies right here in the Hermitage. So the volunteers had to be ready to do whatever was needed, to react quickly and keep smiling, while helping us to resolve all possible situations. At first, the volunteers were not well received at the museum. Hermitage veterans thought that the new generation wanted to take away their jobs. After only a few years, the staff members became more friendly. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Fine. I'm waiting you for a job, but first of all, please uh, write your names in uh, journal because we are in uh, storage. It's very important. What is your name? I'm Francis. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I'm Daria Hook. I will tell you a little bit about the dendrochronology. Dendrochronology is about comparing the annual rings in trees. Studying them can reveal a lot of information about the state of the environment the tree grew in and its age. Volunteers Francis and Felicitas have to work out how old these samples are. It's a little bit weird to have this old piece in your hand because it's still wet and uh, I don't know, it feels like you just put it out of the water and um, you can't really realize that it's so old. It just feels like a normal piece of wood. But I feel really a little bit um, it's a little bit scary because I don't want to do it wrong and I don't want to destroy it. It's very difficult to um, cut with this razor because the surface won't um, show any rings. Um, and it's, it's easier, or it's not easier, but it's more useful to do it with this small razor. Um, so you will find, find that the rings will show underneath what you cut. Recently, volunteers have begun taking photographs. They also write descriptions of and measure ancient Greek sarcophagi found on the northern Black Sea coast. They've measured the whole sarcophagus as well as every tiny detail. You can see that the sarcophagi have so many decorative elements on them. Every single decoration needed to be measured and photographed. But what's most important is that each of the names of our volunteers will be mentioned in the academic prospectuses. They'll feature dozens of names of people who've worked on the team here for over a year. All of them were really immersed in this fascinating process. Oksana is going through her own probation period. She'll have to go through all this herself if she succeeds. Her assignment is to help organize a game for the grand event, Cat Day at the Hermitage. Cats are very important inhabitants at the Winter Palace and the State Hermitage. They've lived in the old Winter Palace since the times of Peter the Great when he brought the first cats from Holland. Later, his daughter Elizabeth issued a special decree for cats to be bred in what is now modern-day Tatarstan. Fifty cats were then brought from Kazan. Since the 1740s, those cats' descendants have lived in the Winter Palace, 
They've been provided with food in return for keeping the exhibits safe. We are also volunteers of sorts. We work for food. And that's Irina. She's also a volunteer. Irina gives us food and medicine and takes care of us. I don't quite understand why she does it. Can I pet her? Of course. Her name is Sofiko. Look, if you pet her here, she's going to purr. Can you hear? Right here. We are often asked which cat is our favorite. Our favorite is the one that is the saddest. The one who is sick at that moment. We give them all the same love and care. When they get well, we have another favorite who is less happy than the others. Here, little girl, my beauty. Let's take a pill. Here's a good girl. Well done. Here we go. We now have 65 cats at the Hermitage. That can sometimes reach 85. There were times when we had 120 cats. Of course, we try to make sure the number of the animals stays within a certain limit. 70 is the maximum we can afford. If there is more, there will be trouble. Cats are selfish. They like their own territory. And we don't have mice at all. We have so many cats that the mice just don't show up here. There was a time when the cats were removed from the museum. I don't know what happened, but in a month we lost half the library. Because rats ate everything. They don't care much for the value of an exhibit. Even if it's a million dollars, they'll still finish it off. I know, I have a cat at home, and I'm starting to look a bit like a cat. I can meow like a cat and lie like a cat. My cat Andrushka, he does it like this. <laughs> the Hermitage is my childhood fairy tale, where my parents would take me. You walk here and forget which century it is. It felt like you were a historical character. I remember when I was a child, I always wanted to walk around in a nice dress with a big skirt to wear a hat. Of course, it was my dream to play a part in all this, to help somehow to gain access to the archive. This is a very important event, both for visitors and volunteers. We've been preparing for it all year. It's an incredibly exciting celebration for the kids. They've been bred and developed and passed down from generations. This is a total destruction of the culture of New Mexico. And I tell everyone, I mean, this, this is not going to impact us only New Mexico. Whatever happens here, we'll go throughout the whole world. Now we're eating antibiotics in the meat, in the milk, in the eggs, in all the organisms that were fed, uh, genetically engineered crops. Why do you think this country is full of obese and sick people? It's because we have a crappy food system. Good 
bills, love and kissing Waiting at the end of my ride Move them on, hit them up, hit them up Hello. The game begins here. This is the story. Today we're fishing. And this is a map of the Hermitage to help you find your way around. This is where it begins. And this is a clue that you need to get where you need to go. This is a quiz that needs to be answered. If you get the answer to the question right, you go to our person in a room, and then you get another flyer and go to another room. You need to pay attention to these kitties here. Here you go. Of course, many of my friends, my parents, at first asked me why. I said because I like it. It's my hobby. For quite a long time, Mom couldn't get used to me leaving early for the Hermitage and coming home late. Now, she's used to it. The family's gotten used to it. Yeah, she's at the Hermitage. She's at home there, and you can't drag her out of there. Yelena usually comes to the museum before opening time and doesn't leave until the guard closes the main entrance. On the 10th anniversary of the volunteer service, her friends joked that they should give Yelena a camp bed. Then she'd be able to spend the night there as well. I like it. Maybe I would have been a housewife, maybe I'd read a book, maybe watch some TV. But it's not that interesting. It's boring. I get bored very quickly. So I came here. First of all, it's a museum. There's always something interesting happening here. They're children. Today is the Hermitage Cat Day. And the day involves a game. We catch big fish and small fish. The challenge is to find stories devoted to cats and fish. We've set up a few checkpoints in the Hermitage with volunteers posted at them, and that's where you see the guys. All of them taking part in the quest. They find the right picture, the right story or piece of art, answer the question, and then move along the route. You found a fish. You found one. So go on, read that question, sea life. Two large fish glittering with scales, it sits on a low table. The third one at the feet of the boy who is holding a bowl of succulent fruit and a basket of greens. The boy represents one of the summer months. Hold on, next question. Next question. Your answer? Well done. I really like the way children solve puzzles. I love helping them. They're having fun. You guess? Well done. That's very, very funny. Yeah, I'm interested in the game and I'm... It's, it seems like a great game. It's really getting children involved because they have to identify um, artifacts, ancient Egyptian artifacts, um, and they're all getting excited and jumping up and down. And I think, yeah, I'm finding it interesting as well to give them advice and tips and things. And so this year's reward for all the participants was a trip to the theatre, where a musical performance was specially staged for them. A few years ago, a Portuguese writer worked with the children here in the same way. He had decided to write a book about Russia and came to work at the Hermitage. Back then, volunteers were often bankers who'd gone bust in the crisis, or the children of people who worked in world-famous museums, like Paul Laurent, whose father is the Louvre's director. He didn't mention who he was or where he was from. Like everyone else, he helped everywhere. 
He helped at conferences, he helped with evening events, he helped if we had to meet guests or something. He helped the department carry boxes, folders, and he always worked with us here. He also taught French here in the department to anyone who wanted. Paul Laurent, along with everyone else, stood and answered visitors' questions for hours on end. Sometimes the most unexpected questions. Some people think that they're at the Russian Museum, and when they're told they're at the Hermitage, they're very surprised. Where's the Russian art? Where's the Rippen? They say. One time, for example, a young man came up looking around the room. He asked where he was. He was told, you're in a museum. Then he was still surprised. His second question was, but which one exactly? Chinese tourists are an interesting bunch. I've never found anything that they find particularly interesting. They see paintings hanging on the walls as just decorations. The same with floors and ceilings. I even heard of one group of Chinese tourists who turned down a trip to the Hermitage because they said they'd already been to the Louvre. So they already knew what a museum was like. In America, everyone always talks about the Hermitage, um, the collection of old Renaissance art. Um, it, it's the most famous stuff that gets talked about in America, and I, of course, wanted to see it. And I also, um, in America, I study history and reading about um, the revolution that was in St. Petersburg and that all the stuff that happened here through history. And um, I got to see that all my first day here, and I've seen that many, many times since I've been working here. One of Raymond's dreams is to join an expedition with archaeologists from the Hermitage. Over the summer, museum staff conduct excavations in Russia's regions and invite everyone to take part. This is our expedition. We've been doing it for 50 years now. Last year we celebrated the 50th anniversary and I have to say that many monuments have been discovered over those 50 years of excavation, but we can still say that even more sites remain unknown. Usually in the archaeology department I've done translating work about um, different um, archaeological excavations that people have done, that scientists, that researchers have done, and also I was doing some translating on Renaissance art. That's definitely been the most rewarding work because it's been interesting and it also helped me practice Russian. The archaeology department is, for many volunteers, one of the most interesting places in the museum. Here, you can literally touch history. I come here um, to draw these ancient objects which are from um, different things that they found and I need to document them in this way as a volunteer to help the archaeological department and you have to be very precise when doing these drawings. It's not like a normal um, drawing where you might miss out some things. Here you need to, every, every mark is important for their research. It's amazing to be in a yes to be behind the scenes at the Hermitage and to see um, the archaeological department see all of this research which goes on, which I would have no idea that there were so many shelves and shelves of all these different items which I think most people wouldn't even yeah know about what was going on behind the scenes. Hermitage staff sometimes thank the volunteers by giving them free tours. For example, a tour of a new storage facility in the old village region. A third of what was stored in the museum was once moved there, about a million items. The largest being a tent given to Russia's Empress Catherine II by the Ottoman Emperor, Sultan Selim III. There was a visit by the Turkish ambassador to St. Petersburg with diplomatic gifts, and one of those gifts is this tent. It's all around us. It's like we're inside the museum exhibit. This is only a fifth of it. The rest is still rolled up and stored away. The tent is way too large because it covers about a hundred square meters. Along with the new storage facility, the Hermitage will soon be offering a museum of modern art.
This building is the left wing of the general headquarters built by Carlo Rossi in the early 19th century. Before the revolution, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs were here. Next year, this grand reconstruction will end and we'll have one of the largest contemporary art museums. In one of the two courtyards which have been rebuilt so far, we can already see one of the first exhibits. It's an installation created by the already famous Russian artists Ilya and Emilia Kabakov. They created this immediately after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And this installation, it, it represents the emergence and growth of the Soviet Union and its collapse. Actually, yes, this isn't just debris left behind. It's part of the installation. We lived through constant construction during communism, so therefore this part probably just represents the continuing construction. There are still many things they haven't seen at the Hermitage, but I think one day they'll catch up and join in other events. Maybe one day you'll pass something. You look and think, my God, I did that. I glued this business, for example, or painted over that crack over there. It's this involvement with everything that you pass by. You see it and realize that you have something to do with it as well. You're also part of history, you're part of the museum, part of those exhibits. Oksana is now a volunteer at the Hermitage. And Yelena, its new employee. After six years of selfless support to the museum, she's been offered a job. But even so, Yelena still volunteers. At the end of her working day, she hurries to meet the visitors with a smile. 